Hi everyone, it's Melissa here from the Melissa B podcast and this is my first episode. I'm very excited um, actually today to have Liam from Liam Stops Tinnitus on with me. Um, I thought that Liam would be the best first guest because Liam has a similar story to me in terms of uh, what started me on my whole wellness journey um, and I'm going to share that with you all today and also get Liam to share his story and tell us all a bit about what he's doing now to help others who have been in the same situation as us. So welcome, Liam. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks very much for having me. It's it's a, it's a very big honour to be, you know, guest number one, and I'm sure you're going to have uh, hundreds more guests as the time goes on, each much better. So it's fantastic. And you know, we were just speaking uh, very briefly, um, you know, before we started recording. And as you just said, it sounds like we literally had an almost identical, like, introduction to this sort of world that we're both in now of alternative health and kind of seeing, you know, the the world of medicine and allopathic medicine for what it really is. So I'm sure as we get into this uh, talk today, it's going to be, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of interesting things, amazing stories. And I'm very excited. So again, thanks for having me on. No, you're very welcome. Thanks for coming on. And yeah, that's why I did invite you on first, because I thought it would be best for my guests. And I mean, there's probably a lot who have been following me on my socials for a while or who have attended my events who um, haven't either heard my story for a long time or heard it at all. So, And it's been a while since I've actually uh, told the story. So I thought um, I'd love to share it with you and then we can um, compare notes. Perfect. I'm excited. (laughs) Um, and this is this is uh, so just to say this is the for the people watching this is the first time i've heard it as well so i'm very interested to hear the story as well i'm sure it's going to be uh fantastic so i can't wait to hear it i'm looking forward to it yeah thank you cool okay so my story goes in 2010 i had a range of unrelated health conditions i was coming and going from the doctors uh, one thing didn't lead to another thing it was just popping up so I had no idea what was going on and I really wasn't even aware that something was going on that's Mm. how unconscious I was of what was going on in Mm. my body Uh, so I ignored everything continued to eat the same way I was quite stressed out newly married um, in a stressful job worked in the concrete jungle uh, and and I think probably quite underlying was some unhappiness in the life I was living um and so at its worst I remember the moment when I was sitting at my desk at work and my left ear started ringing not just ringing screaming at me and mm. I remember I'm, I was going like this and I was looking around I'm like is it the wi-fi is it is it the fluoro lights is it is it my computer mm. um you know I never I never forget the moment and that's when my life changed forever uh, and it sounds dramatic but it is because when you you know love your peace and quiet and when it gets taken away from you 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 realize you notice yeah you, you take it for granted and that's that's what i say to just as a just to interrupt for a second about tonight yeah. yeah it's one of the things that um i talk to my clients about and people that i know have had tinnitus in the past and myself as well is that tinnitus is is really is and not to freak out the people listening with tinnitus because it's fixable but it really is one of the worst things that you can get just because of how um, invasive it is, because it's, it's depending on how loud it is, it, it infiltrates everything, whether you're trying to work, sleep, uh, have sex, exercise, eat something. And especially as you just said, you just uh, said a moment ago, you know, if you're working really hard at a job or at the gym or whatever, and you just want to come home and drink a tea on the couch and just look out the window that gets stolen from you. So you don't yeah. even, you know, you're trying to sleep, trying to take a nap. I don't know if somebody plays video games or something that just gets pulled from you because it's just always there, which is why. Yeah. It's, it's not dramatic to me at all. Sure. Yeah. It's just, it's always there. So yeah, I, I totally, totally get what you're saying. hundred percent. Yeah. I remember I got home and I sat on the couch, like you said, and I just sat there in, yeah, like, like a, like a zombie in shock. Yeah. I'm like, because yeah. I knew what it was because I had a family member who had also experienced it and I knew immediately what happened because mm-hmm. I knew it wasn't wasn't going away mm-hmm. and so um, I also suffered um, quite a bit of vertigo in those initial few weeks and months mm-hmm. um, but the thing the thing was after that I um, I went to your, your usual um, way which was to go and get a diagnosis 
And I mean, it's a little bit hard to get the diagnosis because no one can really tell whether you have it or not. We're just telling them how, how we're feeling, what we're experiencing, what we're hearing. Yeah. So I um, had all the tests done, nothing serious. And they basically said, I went to some, some specialists who said, um, you have tinnitus. Um, it is uh, something that will never go away. Here's a script for a hundred boxes of steroid nasal sprays and blood thinners. And you'll need to take these for the whole rest of your life. Oh, and no. I just, <laughs> and I remember walking out and I just said to myself, no way. Yeah. And my body has created this. Mm -hmm. There is something that has triggered this. And I'm now um, going to jump on the journey to figure out why. So and, I, and, can I ask you a question? Because I'm, I'm just interested. So this was 2008, did you say? 10, 2000, 10, okay. Yeah. Did you, how did you know to think like that? That, you know, you're thinking, okay, my body has created this. I can get rid of this because I didn't think like that. I just thought whatever the doctor says is is the correct answer. And most of the people that I work with who've gotten tinnitus in more recent years, they don't think like that either. So did you have like a, a, a history of fixing illnesses or did you just like, you know, you're just smarter than the rest of us? Like what, what kind of made you think like that? Because most people just go, well, that's me then, I'm done. Like that's I'm that. done, yeah. Yeah. So what yeah. how did you kind of, you know, uh, think like that? I think I from a very young age I always uh looked, you know, or yeah, I looked outside the square for answers. So I from a very young age was learning about certain things, was very conscious in my thinking. I um attended a lot of seminars and I was always learning, always open and mm. always learning. And right. so I I was within a circle of people and community who were also open to this kind of thing and would also ask questions. Mm -hmm. And so thankfully I was already conditioned in a way mm -hmm. to question. And um well, like predisposed to just go, yeah. there must be another way. There's got to be a solution to this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So basic so basically what happened was and 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 it it really did set me on a new path. Mm -hmm. Um I often say if I hadn't had if if that noise didn't start, I would never be where I am right now. Mm -hmm. It really was a really great thing to happen to me <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> and, uh, but know, it's okay. A lot of, it's okay to say that now, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. Really. People say that now that it's gone, but it's so funny that you say that because so many people who I know who get rid of the tinnitus say the same thing. It's like mm -hmm. there's a phrase, and I'm probably going to butcher it, but it's something to the effect of, you know, I'm not a religious man myself, but the phrase is something to the effect of, you know, God gives you his greatest gifts uh, disguised as the worst punishments or something like that. And it, when it comes to tinnitus, you know, it really is the truth as long as the person is thinks like you and they're going, you know what, there must be a way. Because to have it forever is a punishment. But to have it and beat it and to, to walk away with those skills and like that perceptual worldview change is such a gift. It's such a gift. Yes, it is. It is a gift. It really is. And now, because we'll talk about what I, I found and uh, we, yeah, will then, we will compare notes and I will tell you how things went. Yeah. Uh, because I then realized that if I was seeking this information, maybe there are others that were seeking this information and mm -hmm. I'd like to share it with them. So what happened What happened was that I, uh, you know, they say when students ready, the teacher appears. And so I just found teachers all along the way. And back in 2010, that you couldn't find, you know, the, the kind of nutritional information you can find. It wasn't accessible. There wasn't an organic shop down the street. You couldn't find an organic butcher. You know, like you, it just the products that are available now so easily, you couldn't find them. It was few and far between. So this is a completely different time. So people understand from what, what we're in right now. Yes. Back then you had to search for it. Now it's really easily available. But what I did like about that time was that I knew that I had found information that was important and that I wanted to share. And that's what happened to me afterwards. So mm -hmm. I spent the next 12 months um, really looking at things like, um, well, firstly, I put it like this. I needed to acknowledge and accept I had some issues going on. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. were related to nutrition, detoxifying my life, my lifestyle choices, mm -hmm. and my emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah. So all of those 
certain parts of me needed to be looked at. And mm-hmm. it all started with acknowledgement and then taking action. And by taking action, I had to find the answers. And and thankfully, I had a really great group of people around me that led me to the right people. Mm-hmm. So I then found that I was heavily inflamed. I had parasites. I had um, some really serious gut issues going on. I had heavy metal toxicity. I had I had everything. Every I had so much going on. My body needed a big detox. My body was screaming at me for mm-hmm. months beforehand, and I ignored it mm-hmm. until my 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 ear literally started screaming at me and saying, "Hey, you better do something about this, otherwise you're going to be in trouble." Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. You know. I. It, when it comes to tinnitus, when when someone gets like, um, sudden hearing loss or tinnitus or like a really bad bout of vertigo, when it comes to like middle uh, and inner ear problems that's kind of like a really serious warning sign from the body saying like, Hey, we're about to go like over the edge here. Like you're about to get really, really sick. And that's yeah. why there's, there's um, just interrupt. Sorry. There's, there's like, okay. there's neurologists and uh, otolaryngologists, which is an ENT. And they are trying to draw a connection between tinnitus and Alzheimer's. And they're saying that, you know, they're linked somehow and they're trying to put forward and purport that they're causally linked, but, you know, like tinnitus can contribute to the other one. Where I say it's not correct, I say it's the same underlying problem, problems, plural, that is simultaneously causing them. And usually tinnitus comes first because, you know, Alzheimer's is a much more severe and hard to reach problem. But yes, just as you said, sorry to interrupt, but tinnitus is usually, it's like the most obvious, like warning sign, your body's just like, do like you got to do some work you got to fix this you got to fix that so yeah it's a hundred percent a warning sign for sure like it's like the kettle going off or you know yeah. like the sound the kettle makes like like hey yeah. take yeah. some notice <laughs> yeah exactly it's it's like the the canary in the coal mine it's like the last yeah. kind of thing it's like all right everybody out and the canary's dead do exactly, exactly that exactly yeah exactly so yeah, yeah so basically i i changed what i was eating Yep. I um, changed what I was eating. I changed my environment. Mm-hmm. I changed what I was putting on my body, around my body, in my home. Mm-hmm. I was very conscious of what, what I was doing from that perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, I then started doing a lot of deep self-work, emotional work, getting deep into uh, any triggers or triggers or wounds or anything that, traumas that needed to be addressed Mm -hmm. Um, and then lifestyle choices so yeah started adding in some important uh, lifestyle protocols Mm -hmm. and it became very clear to me after a year of implementing all of this Mm -hmm. that everything I had stopped doing had contributed to the sound because the sound so I lost 18 kilos and I was very very healthy and well but Mm -hmm. the sound significantly lowered and yeah. I didn't have vertigo anymore, significantly yeah. lowered. Like, yeah. and this is why I'm interested to have a conversation with you because I still wonder if there's a missing link for me. But like when I say significantly lowered, I barely hear it. I sometimes forget it's even there unless I think about it. Mm-hmm. And I know for me what makes it worse. There's mm-hmm. about five things that make it worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm aware of what they are now. And most of them um I choose not to have anymore but also if I if it does ring it's a it's almost like a GPS for me if it rings I know one of those say five points I said before that I know make it louder one of them I'm out of balance so Mm -hmm. it's like right if I've got a if I'm really stressing out about something or there's something going on for me and I'm not really thinking much about what's what that's doing my ear will start ringing quite loud and I'll know I need to address that yeah you know so it's a great little GPS reminder of of just staying on track. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So then from there, uh, I had a history of, as a child, being around events, a lot of events here in Adelaide, South Australia. So um, my my parents owned a party hire business. I was um, very often exposed to a lot of the large events here in Adelaide. So it was kind of something that I loved being around or being part of so I thought to myself maybe I should start running some events of my own Mm -hmm. and um, that's where I thought to myself I can't just 
I've learned this information, I've implemented it, it's changed my life, I can't just do nothing with it. I'd mm -hmm. like to share this kind of information with others, especially rem remembering we're going back to 2010 where mm -hmm. this kind of information wasn't out there like it is now. Mm -hmm. So I started running retreats and bringing together all the amazing practitioners that helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, I ran film screening film launches like there's a film called heal i don't know if you've seen it or heard of it but it's called heal um and no, i haven't heard which one's that who is that an australian it's, called, film or? it's an american film and it, and it's pretty much along the lines of everything we've just spoken about in terms of your yeah. health nutrition the way to think about health uh, yeah. great film we had uh three really big film screenings here in to run yeah film screenings guest speakers um um, book launches, mm -hmm. different kind of well-being and um, creating your vision style events. And yeah, I just got got known for sharing that kind of information and bringing the community together and sharing, you know, if there's something new that I'd learned or a topic I was interested in and I thought the public should get together and learn about it, then I would put that put the event on. So awesome. um Yes, yeah, so I was doing that. And then recently I've had even more of a transformation in terms of um, my whole body and being and life. And, um, you know, I went through a, uh, a pretty challenging time with uh, divorce and I've got now got two young kids. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I ended up uh, going on a program that helped me, again, really focus on my nutrition, movement, mindset, lifestyle choices. And I've actually been able to, for the first time, uh feel a certain way look a certain way live a certain way and maintain it so, yeah I, I saw on your uh your instagram you did like a, a bodybuilding competition or a, i don't know if you call it that like a fitness um yeah it was a bikini body competition yeah right, okay. I, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it was a, it so, was a so, big, the transformation between um uh i can i can see you definitely when you said before you know you lost the 15 kilos i can definitely see that i mean it's amazing yeah. Like from from what you used to look like to to what you look like now to being like on stage in a bikini and everything it's it's fantastic it's amazing yeah I never really thought I never really thought I'd do that but um what what what's happened is that I just now really live by and and I was like what I learned back then I I wasn't able to truly maintain and mm. now what I'm doing I feel so good I look good and, and just like I've had this zest for life I haven't really had before and I've been able to maintain it and so now I'm really encouraging uh, women especially to reach out to me if they need something like that in their lives because I again can't it's all about hormones so that pro this program is all about hormones and uh, how hormones and our lifestyle choices impact uh, how we look and feel in terms of especially fat loss yeah, um I, I i have a um i i think i have to look more into especially like female hormones compared to male because i have a um a, fr a friend of mine who i've been talking to um for like two years now and she's a woman and she's uh from germany and she it mm -hmm. seems like she does a very similar thing to you and she focuses now in a big way on helping women with hormones and their cycle and weight loss and all these different things. And, you know, she talks about the contraceptive pill and she talks about like um, estrogenic things that, you know, girls will drink that's not good for them. And it has a different effect that, you know, to them than it does on a man's body. And, you yeah. know, I, I can tell, you know, because a man's hormone cycle is uh, 24 hours and a woman's hormone cycle is like every 30 days, right? So it's like, and you go through different periods and that, but I don't know too much about but i do i have a basic idea of the time frames so for a man i can just tell him like you know go do a dry fast like a 24 hour 48 hour dry fast but for a woman it's like it seems like it's more you have to know like at what point is she in her cycle is she pre or post menopausal is she trying to get pregnant is she, is she pregnant did she just give birth like all these different things so it seems like that's something that you definitely know a lot about and it's definitely you know very important stuff so it's very cool I think it is important to learn. Um, <laughs> it's actually quite simple, really. Um, what I've what I've learned in terms of uh, uh, fat loss and longevity, and you know, creating this energy that I've not really had before. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll come back and we'll talk about nutrition and the changes in my 
in my thought process about mm-hmm. nutrition like because we yeah, sure. we are on the same page there but mm-hmm. um but yeah so that's where I'm at now starting this podcast that's where that's where it all started and so here we are actually going back and talking from the beginning so I would love for you to share your story and what happened to you when you were um uh a yeah. little bit younger than you are now and what happened yeah, to yeah. you yeah, definitely. So I got to tell you, we have a very similar story, a very, very similar story. So <sighs> mine started when I was, so I'm 30 years old now. My, mm-hmm. I had, for, for the people watching now who might not know, um, I have a company called uh, Silence Tinnitus Now that I've run for about six years. So six years ago, um, and for the four years before that, I had very, very severe tinnitus and hyperacusis. So tinnitus obviously being the ringing, and I had 10 out of 10 ringing in both ears. I was 21 years old at the time when it started. I just started uh, attending music college. Uh, my tinnitus was brought on mostly from noise trauma, from playing drums, which I still do to this day. Uh, don't have tinnitus or hyperacusis anymore, thankfully. But, you know, the thing with me is when I got my tinnitus and hyperacusis means noise sensitivity. So, mm-hmm. you know, if if somebody like walked in the door at my home and dropped their, you know, purse or bag onto the counter too heavily, the noise would literally give me a headache. It hurt so much. Yeah. So, so I had very, very severe issues. Um, the thing with me is my mother is actually was and still is a nurse. And uh, so she knew all the specialists and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And so she took me to see, you know, some very, very qualified, educated, seasoned, professional um, and in demand ENTs. And mm-hmm. I went through the same thing that you went through. You know, the whole rigmarole will give you a pressure test will give you an um, autoacoustic emissions test, will give you a, a multiple audiograms, will look in your ear with an otoscope. Did you have to have the test where they put the camera down your nose and into your throat? No, I never <laughs> I did that. Know. I never did that. I did. It was terrible. <laughs> we did it when you were awake? When you were yes. right there? Oh, God. No, I, I never yeah. had that done. God. No, I I just had, um, you know, I, I but I did have surgeries. So... Yeah. You know, I saw this, this all took place in Melbourne, Australia, which has one of the best healthcare systems, not only in Australia, but in the world. It's very, very well known for that. We have, we have good healthcare in um, Australia, good facilities and things like that. Excuse me. So, you know, I went to so many different ENTs and I've said this before, but I'll, I'll say it again on this show, which is that there's two kinds of ENTs. There's the ones that actually care about helping you and there's the other ones that just don't give a damn they just don't care and you can tell the difference because because when you sit down in their office and you say you know they say welcome how can I help you what is your you've obviously been referred by a GP what's the problem because you can't just go to a specialist you have to get a referral what's the problem and I would say well you know I've got this ringing in my ear and they go they just interrupt you and go oh well you know that's tinnitus it's for life we can give you antidepressants, or which I never took, or we can give you, you know, you can go and get earpieces, which is going to cost you five thousand dollars, and you're going to need them for. Oh, the did rest. you get a mouth guard? I I got a mouth yeah. guard for the for the grinding the teeth. Yes, I got, I got a mouth guard. The, the, see, these things are just things that ENTs they just get told to tell you this in medical school, they because yeah. they just interrupt you and they're like, a lot of these doctors, and this happens for, you know rheumatologists it happens for endocrinologists it happens for psychiatrists and psychologists that it's kind of like you know fill by number they they match the things together and they forget the most important part of any diagnosis and prognosis which is that there's a human fucking being (laughs) sitting across from you in the room with a unique life unique set of circumstances and choices not once not once did any of these doctors ever say, so what are you eating? Or so what's, what, what's your daily life look like? How much alcohol do you consume? You know, yeah. only if you're going to get life insurance, do they then get that for you? Because again, yeah. it's all about money. But if you're not mm-hmm. getting insurance and you're not getting a checkup, 
and you're just going into a specialist's office who only has about seven, I think the average uh, time spent in a doctor's office for an Australian for non-life-threatening illnesses is something like four minutes. It's unbelievable. Yeah, well, I was going to say seven, but yeah, four. Yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah, it's just, it's probably around seven, but yeah, it's it's unbelievably. The point is it's what it should be should be like an hour. Like when I, yep. you know, go and when I have clients call me um, and, you know, for tinnitus, obviously, um, I don't start talking until about 40 to 45 minutes in because I just start off with, all right, tell me everything. And they just go through like, well, you know, this was my childhood and I was addicted to drugs here and I did this and I had this surgery and I took, I was saying, um, yeah. you know, when I do the calls of my clients, which are an hour long, we usually go to like an hour and 15 minutes because I don't start talking until like, you know, 40 to 45 minutes in because, you know, what am I supposed to say? Am I, you know, I can't give, a, I can give a person general advice, like, you know, reduce the coffee intake, um, stop using AirPods in your ears, you know, try and get more sunlight, but then you're missing out on the personalized stuff that really helps them. So back to my situation with uh, tinnitus, I went to so many different ENTs and the point I was making about the ENTs who do want to help you compared to the ones that don't, they both have an equal chance of actually fixing you. And the reason is because they both get exactly the same education, whether they go to this, you know, Queensland University, Melbourne University, um, whether they receive their training in Canada or you know, New Zealand or whichever country, it's pretty, it's pretty much the same. Like here's the anatomy and physiology. Um, and in terms of, you know, what you should, should suggest to your patients, here's what the drug companies paid us to tell you, which is exactly mm -hmm. how it works. It's not based mm -hmm. on like, they have to like give you a little bit of help, but you know, I've even seen gastroenterologists when I was younger, I had, I had ulcerative colitis and I had severe problems and I was put on drugs and everything. And we go and we'd see, I had to get like a yearly colonoscopy, which for a young kid was not fun. And I'd have to go and see the gastroenterologist all the time. Again, who was a lovely man. He was so nice. I, I, I'm even friends with him to this day, but his education was just such a load of shit that he couldn't help me. And so I'd go in there. It's, this is a side thing. If This is before tonight, by the way. I go in yeah. there with my mother because I was young. I was like 11, 12, 13, whatever. And I go in there with my my mother and I'd be like, you know, should I be eating something different? And he'd go, no, no, no. What you eat has no bearing on your digestive function. And I just go, oh, okay. And just like believe it. And me and my mum would say, well, he's the doctor, you know, because back then, as you said, you know, back back then, this was in 2000. I graduated in 2011. So this is 2000. And five-ish and so even back then i don't even think there was youtube back then or if there wasn't mm -hmm. what it is like, there was certainly no instagram so you yeah. know you know that the doctor says you do it well they went to medical school so they must know they must have yeah. the answer i didn't go to medical yeah. school i can't even you know name the bones in my hand and they can tell me how they function and physiology and blah 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 at least back then so back to tinnitus you know the ent who didn't care about me would just usher me out of the office and say, make sure you pay on the way out. The ones who did care uh, would say, well, we can try this surgery or that surgery. And so one of the surgeries that I got, and I've got pictures of this. I had a, um, I'm not sure of the name of it, but I got my, I had very bad allergies when I was young, uh, which I now know were due to mold because my cupboard was uh, full of, we cut off again. Oh my God. Um, do, do, do. okay yeah. <laughs> back again all right uh when i pick off okay so i had uh, very bad yes allergies. yeah i had when i was uh young i had very very bad. had very bad yes allergies. yeah i had when i was uh young i had very very bad allergies uh which i uh, now yeah. know were actually due to mold so i when i eventually left home oh god Oh, here we go. When I, when I, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> when I, when I left home, um, yes. my, my mom actually told me, she called me when I was gone and said, your cupboard where I kept my clothes is completely full of mold. 
and all of my clothes were like covered in mold and it was uh -huh. only, yeah it was only because I'd been taking them out and moving them around that it hadn't had enough time to build up and visually show but that's yeah. what it was you know and the doctors you know I went I went to allergists I had allergy tests and all these things and uh, now I know through research on mold and you know Jill Krista from the United States of America is like a mold expert and people don't realize a lot of people's allergies to dust mite animals and pollen uh, is actually caused by mold mold actually make, it reduces the power of your immune system making you more yeah. susceptible to allergies and so yeah. you never hear an allergist talk about that well it's not yeah. their fault it's not it really isn't their fault they were never, you know, taught about this, which is why when I fix people, like, you know, I have people who've had tinnitus for 40 years come to me and get rid of it in six months. And unfortunately, but understandably, they are very angry because they they go, you know, I've lost 40 years of my life and yeah. I had hit pieces and, you know, I couldn't go to events and like, you know, I couldn't even go to my daughter's wedding for that long because the noise was too much and you know I did the dance with her and I had to leave and I went to all these experts and I paid like you know these people have paid like I've had people who've, who are very successful you know they're businessmen and they've paid like up to half a million dollars on treatment from these clinics of people who are basically charlatans like they're basically taking advantage of people who are vulnerable which is really some really sick shit but they get angry because, you know, but when it comes to doctors, they're back to doctors who really think they're helping, but their education is shocking. And they say, I'm going to call up my ENT and give them a piece of my mind. And I'm just like, man, why bother? Like, who cares? Yeah. Like, you, if, yeah. you, if you're going to call them, you can say, hey, just so you know, this fixed me. Maybe you can suggest it to your patients. But again, yeah. that's not going to happen either. Do you really think that, you know, a, a person and it, you know, unfortunately, money's not a bad thing, but greed is. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. a lot of ENTs that I know are greedy and they do. I've told many ENTs, you know, here's the like, it's just undeniable at this point that you can fix tinnitus through changing your yeah. life. It is a fact. It is a fact. And just you tell I've told these ENTs and they go, oh, thanks. Yeah, I'll be sure to look that up why the fuck would they ever want that to happen? Because they're just like, they make so much money from consultations. When someone pays yeah. $150 to come in and then they're going to say what? Oh, here's this like free information I got. Go do this and it'll go away. Or do they want to say, yeah, you have to pay us another $6,000 and you have to come in forever. Like which one, you know, are they going to do? So unfortunately, you know, most of them choose the latter. Anyway, so I... I had hypercusis and tinnitus for three and a half years in total. And about a year into that, I, I couldn't deal with it. And I became addicted to drugs and alcohol, like, you know, things like cocaine and ecstasy and pain medication, prescription medication, you know, ketamine, things like that, alcohol, very bad stuff. Like in my life, just I became isolated. I didn't want to see my friends my life was just falling apart, you know, just you know, my parents are just like, what the hell? Because I was still living at home at that point. Um, even yes. like the age of like 21, two, three, which is depressing looking back on it. But I was just, I couldn't hold down a job. I couldn't concentrate. I was like, what am I going to do? And so I realized, you know, I'm either going to, it's, it's, it's very dark, but it's the truth. I realized like, I'm either going to solve this or I'm just going to kill myself because it was so bad all the time. It's just, it was, I wouldn't wish it, wish it on anyone. It was horrific. And so I started to, you know, basically look on the internet. On the internet. Yep. And I, you know, I used to follow the health thing back in, I was, it would have been 2015, something like that. The health, the world of health in 2015 was basically like veganism is the healthiest thing on the face of the earth. Like go yeah. vegan, that's the smart thing to do. It's better smart for thing. yes. Yeah, it's yeah. better for the animals, it's better for the environment, and it's better for you. Now we know those three things are absolutely false. It kills more animals, it's worse for the environment, and it's not healthy. In fact, it's quite detrimental to the health. Uh, and I've seen my before these jabs came out, which I think you know what I'm talking about, my number one clients was always vegans. 
every single time they just 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 yeah. destroys your health it's not good and there's many reasons for that we can talk about later if you want to get into it but so what did i do i, I went vegan right and not only did i go vegan i went zero carbohydrate raw vegan so i was eating just like oh my gosh <laughs> green juices <laughs> apple juice um well i was having chia seed i was um i was having um carrot celery beetroot pineapple juice every morning <laughs> uh yeah i was i was basically doing yeah i was doing a very similar thing very similar very similar and i was just going to um the smoothie queen <laughs> oh yeah and and looking back on it like um it's so and it seems crazy because of what we've been told in for by our parents by high school by movies by documentaries by celebrities by magazines by advertisements and by propaganda that it's hard for people to understand like you know eating an excessive amount of plants is not only not as healthy as we've been told it's actually quite bad for you when you consider the plant toxins like phytates, lectins, oxalates, and salicylate. And just quickly, pe people don't realize this, but salicylate in both its organic form, which is in plants, and it's also made in laboratories, it's known as sodium salicylate. Mm -hmm. These two compounds separately altogether are actually used in scientific studies to induce tinnitus in both humans and rats. They literally use this compound which is shown to be in large amounts in practically um, all uh, all plants and alcohol as well, especially beer. There's lots of salicylate in beer to induce tinnitus, which is why people mm. say to me like, you know, Liam, I like have one beer and then my ear started to go crazy or I had, you know, a, a, I thought I was being healthy and I had a green smoothie after the gym and like my ears went crazy. And I was like, yeah, because it's the plant trying to hurt you. It's literally the plant trying to hurt you with oxalate, lectins, this whole thing. So anyway, I do that and, and wouldn't you know it, my tinnitus actually gets better. But the thing is, I attributed that to, oh, well, it's because, you know, meat is just causes cancer and all this silly stuff and meat is bad for you and it clogs your arteries and blah, blah, all this nonsense that you see people who still crazily believe. And I believed it back then. And plants are so healthy. When really what it was, was the, you know, at the same time that I stopped eating carbohydrates and I ate more plants and no animal products at all, I also cut out the junk. No, yes. stop the drugs, sugar. Stop the alcohol, yes. sugar, excessive carbohydrates. You know, you would know in Australia what like big M's are, the chocolate drink, cut those out. No coffee is a big one too. Uh, you know, just pasta, you know, all this stuff that just like, is barely, you know, those kind of foods, you know, let's, let's exclude like, you know, things like um, just like a box of cereal, which is obviously just garbage, but yes. foods like pasta and rice and things like that, you know, those will stop you from starving, which is great. And they'll stop you from being hungry, but they are not good for you. They're not there. And you'll see people like Bart K and, and Sean Baker and Anthony Chafee and um, Ken Berry and all these very sophisticated doctors with no point to prove other than here's what's healthy telling you yeah. like, you know, you can eat this if you want to, but I wouldn't, which is exactly mm -hmm. what I tell people. It's like, you know, that's one thing that I've never, I'm kind of getting off track, but I find this interesting. It's, it's, yeah, I, no. I can't stand it when I see vegans doing these stupid fucking protests and going like meat is murder and all this sort of stuff and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, guess what? In the real world, things die. And also, if you wanted to be responsible for less animals dying in in um, more humane ways, you would eat how I eat, which is you just eat a couple of steaks and eggs every day. Because if you're a vegan, you're killing habitat, you're paying for farmers to poison, shoot, blow up, trap and drown foals foxes ferrets toads insects um mice moles boars wild pigs and they don't kill them humanely with a stun gun they blow them to pieces they trap them and then when the mothers die guess what all the kids in the burrows starve to death and sometimes they even eat each other so how humane is that it's some pretty twisted stuff if you ask me 
real, you know, vegans, I don't think vegans know the horrors they cause in farming. It's really dark. It, honestly, it's sick. It's some sick shit. It's fucking horrific. Uh, anyway, so, so I do that and I start to get better. And that really starts me on my journey, um, you know, which is, well, you know, for you, on when you left that doctor's office and you thought, not nah, my body caused it, it can fix it. I had that realization, but three and a half years later. <laughs> so I, I was a little bit slow off the mark compared to yourself, but it is what and it this, is. And, and by the way, you know what? I was I was so stressed out that I would walk into the office with a Red Bull and a packet of lollies. That's oh, how good. I was starting my day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I exactly. mean, the sugar and caffeine. I was having a lot of energy drinks, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's Alcohol, the Alcohol, energy drinks, sugar. Well, the, the thing, yeah, I mean, oh, goodness me, I can see why you got tinnitus then. I, I can see where it came from or what. Played but, you know, like my, like I said to you, like my, I had had a number of issues come up. Like I had candida, ended up coming out onto the skin, went mm. all over my back. Mm. And you know, one by one, everything just reversed without me having to take or use anything. Once I started eliminating all things that was um, flaring it up. Did you, um, did you do any like detox protocols, cleanses, parasite cleanses, things like that? Or was it purely yeah. dietary? No, no, yeah, I, yeah, I did at the time. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was. I was being guided by sure. a natural health mm. professional. Yeah. Um, and it was a while ago. But now, yes, now, now I, with nutrition, I choose um, like you, you know, like it's, it is such a hard shift being in that mindset of eat eat the rainbow um the smooth smoothies and juices and the salads are all healthy for you and and now um you know i have been doing mostly carnivore for a long time and 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 i feel the best i've ever felt and how it you, is hard how, to let go feel? yeah how do you feel do you oh, feel amazing it's, yeah, it's it's like almost superhuman. Like Anthony Chafee yeah. actually put a, a video out recently speaking about that superhumanness, that feeling yeah. you get. Yeah. Um, because Isn't if you haven't amazing? tried it, yeah, if you haven't tried it, you really don't know. And it is a feeling you get when you're eating like that, moving appropriately, um, you know, doing the work on self at the same time, as well as, you know, a number of different lifestyle protocols that enhance your your body and your thinking and how you feel and like I actually feel younger like I look younger I just turned 40 but um, like I actually feel younger uh, mm -hmm. I feel younger now than I did in my 30s it's mm -hmm. just it's a whole different world it's just it's everything isn't it because maybe you can relate to some of these uh, you know, these things but for myself I, le I need less sleep I don't really get angry at things anymore I don't really, um, you know, my I, I don't really have trouble getting focused. Like my focus is just like instant. I wake up feeling amazing, amazing digestion, uh, great skin, great physique yep. that without even really needing to go to the gym that much. And it yep. just shows you, um, you know, and it's amazing, isn't it? Because the superhuman thing is that, and this is kind of cliche, but I, I think it is the truth that, that superhuman feeling is just really the the human experience. That's just like humanness, isn't it? Because when people yeah. are poisoning themselves, and I like what you said before, which is so true, which is that it's multifaceted because it's not just dietary, it's emotional, spiritual, physical, um, social, um, you know, the sunlight, all these different things that people like mold, yeah. fungus. And I want to show you something you were mentioning um uh, about parasites and things like that i don't know if you can see this can you yes. see that's yes. that's a big egg sac i've got a client at the moment who's australian and yes see that she's at the moment doing like she's had very serious health problems and tinnitus mm -hmm. and all these things and she lives in southeast asia mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. the country close to myself i live in thailand and yeah She's been doing, you know, my system and getting better. And she's on the part where you, you know, parasite cleanse. And she's just dropping, like defecating out these big, that's like the size of this mouse. That's how big it is. It's wow. like you know, that big of just these egg sacs just coming out of her like once a week now. 
And it just goes to show like how sick she was. And how many doctors do you think ever said to her, hey, have you ever thought that you might have parasites? Zero, yeah. not a single one. And again, yeah. it's, it's not their fault. It's no cause. It's a cause for concern, but not, a, not people don't need to get pitchforks and rally in the street because it's not really their fault, these doctors, because yeah. they just don't get taught these things. They just don't. Yeah. They don't know what they don't know. However, yeah. I will say that we are in the age of information now and that yeah. this stuff is like everywhere. Like it's yeah. if, you, if you type in like parasites on the internet um, or even parasites and a specific symptom like eye floaters, vertigo, uh, painful periods, erectile dysfunction, whatever, you could probably find an article that relate those things together. You know, for yeah. example, um, one of parasites, their favorite places to live is on this bone back here called the mastoid, right. the mastoid bone here. Um, yep. And many people, especially in uh, countries like Indonesia, Thailand, and India, where cleanliness can be a problem and parasites can flourish, a lot of, especially young people, end up having to get surgery to get these big worms taken out of these bones here. And it's caused them tinnitus when they have the mm -hmm. parasites because they love going there. They've gotten it's yeah. like something to do with a blood flow problem or something like that. Mm. Anyway, so that's just an interesting picture. So back to my story. So I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go overseas and I need a break and I had a bit of money and I came here to Chiang Mai, which is where I, I've lived now for many years in Thailand. And um, I came here and I got better due to sunlight. And I kind of just condensed the rest of the story down. But um, I, yeah. ended, I ended up going from Thailand and Chiang Mai to to Bucharest, which is in Romania, Eastern Europe, just because I've always wanted to go to Eastern Europe and it was a cheap flight. And I wanted to do cold water therapy. And there were people there doing like stuff in the lakes where they would drill a hole in the lake and they'd tie a rope around you and dunk you in. And I did that and I got a lot better. And mm -hmm. then I went to uh, Belize, Georgia. Uh, Georgia is in the country, which is between Eastern Europe and the Middle East, it's kind of like right in there. It's a very interesting place. And I went there and I did some dry fasting just by myself, not at a clinic or anything. And I, I completely got rid of my tinnitus by doing things like sunlight, grounding, exercise. Um, the mental thing is a big one too. Um, muscle release, fascia release, things like that. I did some cleanses as well and I just got rid of it. And then I, you know, started teaching other people how I did it and um, went on tinnitus forums. And I wouldn't advise anyone to go on tinnitus forums. Those places are awful. No, they're very, don't do that. they're very negative. You know, when you, when they're I, they're very negative. It's, uh, yeah. and yeah. I would like even, a... I would even go so far as to say that they don't want a solution because, and I'll tell you why I think that, and people might disagree with me, but I've, you know, I've been in this world of tinnitus for a total of 10 years now. You know, I had tinnitus for four years and I've had silence for six. Mm -hmm. I believe that a lot of people, you know, they use tinnitus, whether appropriately or not, they use it as an excuse as to why they haven't achieved what they want in their life. Because mm -hmm. how many people look at their life and go, oh yeah, no, you know, I'm 40 or 50 or whatever. And I, I look the way I want to look. I'm dating who I want to date. I'm making the money I want to make. I'm happy. Like almost everyone is like quite unhappy with like every aspect of their life. Like all, they're, they're, especially with social media. I mean, holy shit. Like, you know, looking on there and going, oh God, I wish I looked like her or him or I wish I was dating her or him. Like people just get lost in it. And most of it's fake anyway. I don't know why people care, but people do. So people never want to, you know, look in the mirror and go okay well there's the problem there it's me they want to go no 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 it's not me and people will say oh it's a you know it's it's the political climate or it's the economy or it's you know my mother wasn't nice to me when i was young and some people have like actually legitimate reasons of horrific things that have happened to them fine if you get paralyzed from the waist down or something i get it that's fine for not being an athlete whatever but yeah. you know, to say, you know, it's someone else's fault or it's tinnitus's fault, you know, that's their way out and not having to take any responsibility. So when I came along and I said, sorry, you don't get to use that excuse anymore. You have to now take responsibility. 
people lost their fucking minds. Holy shit. And, you know, you're a scammer. You don't know what you're talking about. You, you're not even a doctor. You weren't educated. And I was like, guys, I'm I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying, I'm not telling you to do this like irreversible, dangerous, expensive surgery, which by yep. the way, those doctors are telling you to do, but I'm not telling you to do that. But it wasn't that I wasn't a doctor. It wasn't that I didn't, you know, have anything worth listening to. It was that I was threatening their their excuse. You know what I mean? Yeah. So- and also it who would they be if they if they weren't that version of them? So you know- who would they have to be to change what they eat? What would they have to let go of to really uh, incorporate these new protocols? They'd have to step into being a completely new person. Some people don't want to let go. And mm. I find a lot of people, especially with weight loss um, and any any changes that they want, they just, some people are holding on so tightly, mm. even though they may want a certain outcome. They may want to stop the ringing they may with me they may want to lose 10 kilos well there's a certain version of you that has to die (laughs) for that new version of you to birth and it takes uh choice and dedication and commitment willpower you know and they they also there's a fear involved in that because who am i if i'm not who i've always been you know i i I love that phrase as well it's that um you know and it's it sounds crazy or dramatic but when someone wants to you know speaking specifically about tonight is when someone says well and i've said this a couple of times to people but i choose my words carefully but it is true when someone says liam how do i get rid of the ringing i say well you have to die first as in the actual person you are has to die because (laughs) they, they don't they don't want to let go of who they are but another thing is their friends and their family they usually have to say goodbye to them because they just they usually hang out with absolute terrible people just who drink all the time and if if they take drugs or not drugs or smoke weed and you know i tell them i say to them like okay go to your friends and tell them about a goal you have a financial or physical goal and let's see how they react they go oh no my friends care about me they wouldn't blah blah and i say yeah, okay go and tell them that you want to you know get a six pack or that you want to have a family within two years, or that you you know want to start making, I don't know, half a million dollars a year or whatever it is. And they go there and pretty much every single time they just get like shit on. Why do you want to do that? That's stupid. Or, oh, look at big guy. It's like they just get mocked by their friends who aren't really their friends at all. You know, if the only- And also, and, just- and also I, I feel that friend, that some friends, family- whoever sometimes it's the closest people to you uh they can't be right about you (laughs) they want to be right about you you Mm. know and and um if you change then you know they won't be right about you and a lot of people don't unfortunately there's a lot of people that don't want to see you change so if you don't have the support you also don't have the willpower um and if you know the earring or the weight gain or the health issue is not enough unfortunately some people just get stuck in their their cycles um and nothing ever changes nothing changes if nothing changes and a lot of times it's actually quite simple what they have to do but it's not easy you know you can i'm sure you can very simply tell someone what they have to do is it easy no that's that's the hard part and that's especially what i've been focusing on for the last like this year especially is that I keep wondering, like, you know, excuse me, I keep telling people, like, I give them, like, okay, do this, 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 excuse me, and they just won't do it or they won't stick with it. And I say to them, like, you know, you're in so much pain. You came to me for help. You either paid me or you didn't pay me. That's fine. Here are the steps to do it. And it is simple. It's like, eat this, don't eat that, do this, you know, don't stay up too late and do this, but they just can't do it. And I'm just like, why can't they do it? And then mm-hmm. you realize that it's because they're still the same person. They're still got the same thought processes. They still hang out with the same people. They're still, you know, surrounding themselves of all this stuff and they'll never change. And I think to your point that you said about your closest friends, not wanting you to change, basically, I 100% agree. And I'm I'm not friends with basically any of my high school friends, any of them. 
because, and I remember one in particular, I won't say his name, but I grew up with him and we were very similar. We're on the swim team together. We're a similar height, similar attractiveness, similar, whatever, like same friendship group. And, you know, I basically wanted more out of life and he was happy to just play video games and do all this sort of stuff. And I was like, let's go chase women and let's go make money. And I want to do this and that. And he's like, oh, that's he, the, the phrase was, oh, that's gay. <laughs> like that's yeah. so lame. That's this and that. And then yeah. I started to just not hang out with them anymore and start to really have start having a, a great life. This was before tonight, by the way, and start yeah. doing really well in my life. And he fucking hated me, hated me because the problem was we deep down both wanted every guy and every girl wants to succeed in their life in a mirror and at various ways. But you can tell yourself this story as to why it's not your fault that you didn't get it. One of them being tinnitus. But the problem with the situation with me and him was that we were so similar. So when I started to succeed, I think he realized, well, there's like no excuse for me because we're so much the same person. If he can do it, I can do it. And so he yeah. started to say horrible things behind my back and make up things about me and not want to be with me wherever I was going. And so, yeah, pe people, you know, and I tell people even because Christmas was just around is this again might sound a bit dramatic to people, but I don't think that it is. And that is that you don't get to choose your family, you know, unless it's like a spouse. You know, so I say to people, if you have a very, like, if you have like a narcissistic father or mother or your brother or sister is a terrible person or your whole family is awful, you don't have to go home for Christmas. You don't have to do it. You can just make your own family, whether that's with your friends and your husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, and you can just do whatever you want. When I had, well, I have a great family. My family is amazing. I can't wait to see him again. Um, in a couple of days actually but my Christmas which was yesterday I just spent with with friends of mine here and it was great and I had mm -hmm. people going I had people saying Liam what should I do how do I deal I'm going home for Christmas how do I deal with I know they're going to spike my tinnitus and they're going to pressure me to drink alcohol and I just said dude why are you going oh because they're family it's like that's not a good enough reason it's just not if your family mm -hmm. sucks you don't have to talk to them ever again. Sure, they're going to say, oh, my God, I raised you. It's like, yeah, because that's the law. You have to legally. Oh, I put a roof over your head and food on your plate. Yeah, because otherwise you probably would have gone to prison. You know, so it's just like it's just gaslighting. It's just narcissism. It's just all these different things. So, but that's a, a whole other thing. Do you, but, find, so. do, you, do you find because I find the difference with my coaching clients that, um, that for the ones that have, for example, the same goal, I want to I want to drop 10 kilos and uh, tone up my body. And there are some there was a time when they were doing the program on their own. There was a time when I now I don't allow the program to be done without coaching and accountability. And mm. I think what you're saying from what you're saying it sounds the same is mm. that most people actually um it gets down to like their belief in themselves or or being held accountable to make the right choices at the right time and it could be to do with family it could be to do with food it could be to do with their lifestyle choices and and a lot of people actually can't do that on the on their own and they do need that extra hand holding or support to get to get them through especially the first three or four or two three four weeks you know especially the first two weeks um so do you find that by you holding them accountable it uh you see better results in terms of them actually doing what you're telling them to like if they do it on their own are they likely not to do it or is it harder or it takes longer so I have a bit of a different way of doing it. And I'll tell you what it is. So in terms of holding people accountable, I use, um, it's, it's a little bit dark, but it works. And I, I make people think about, you know, their deathbed. And I think, mm -hmm. okay, so, you know, you've gone through life. When someone says, oh, I just can't stop drinking alcohol. If it's something, okay, let's see, if it's alcohol, I say go see a counselor. But if it's something like sugar, even though sugar is kind of a drug anyway, or tobacco, I say, okay, so let's, let's talk about this. So you're on your deathbed and you're, let's say you're like 78. So like, you know, probably an expected death for like an average person or maybe a bit older now, whatever. You didn't die of cancer. Oh, well, you didn't die of smoking. 
you're on your deathbed. Congratulations, you had a great life. But you still have tinnitus. You still have it. It's not gone. You're sitting there with your kids all around you and your grandkids. And guess what? You can barely fucking hear them. And as you drift off, whether you're Islamic or you're Christian or you're Jewish, you go to the next realm and you just, you still had tinnitus. Imagine how fucking pissed you would be. And (laughs) it's not cool to shame people. But I don't like to use the word shame and I don't, but I kind of give them that pressure. And another thing that I do, and that works very well, by the way, another thing that I do is I say, well, the reason that you haven't changed again is because you haven't changed, you know, who you are. And I say the best way to change who you are is to change um, other people's perception of you. And you can't really change other people's perception of you who already known you. So you should get new people. And I get them to do this. I say, get a piece of paper. And I say, and describe to me like an average weekday and an average weekend. And write down the people who you spend time with and how they see you. And it's like, okay, well, on the weekend, I hang out with, you know, Joe and the boys and whatever. And, you know, they see me as the fun dude from high school who like takes drugs and does pills and we go out and, you know, whatever and all that sort of stuff. Or we just go and have fast food and whatever. And then I say, go and tell me about your weekday now. And it's like, all right, well, that's like, you know, I'm in the break room and me and the, me and the girls get together and we always have like, I don't know, fatty Fridays and we have junk food at lunchtime and that sort of thing. And you're just around these people who just expect so fucking little from you. So fucking little that it's honestly pathetic. And they just, it's like the lowest, it's like just above shooting heroin in the break room. Obviously not. That was a joke, but but you see what I mean? It's just like, it's pathetic. And you're around, obviously I'm not telling people that, you know, you have to change your careers and like, you know, because if you're someone who works in a corporate job, don't just go and quit because that's insane. You need to solve that and fix that. But you can fix your weekends immediately. You know, you don't have to, you know, there are certain things like, oh, I'm on a basketball team and, you know, like I love it. It's my exercise. But afterwards, we always go and get beers. And it's like, all right, we just make up some. I actually tell people, just make up an excuse. Don't go. And then eventually to say, yeah, I don't want to go anymore. But it's, I but just I think I, what I find though is I think there is, it can get to a certain point. I think initially it's hard, but it can get to a certain point where firstly you have a strong enough belief in what you're doing, commitment to it, Mm. a track record. And so you have the willpower enough to be in an environment where you're being tested and able to stick to it. Um, But I do believe in what you're saying that if it is hard enough to do that, if it's hard to do it at the beginning uh, or at any point really, then, then yes, um, change your environment. But yeah. you also you also want to just be able to trust yourself enough to make the right choices. And, you know, we, we I don't want anybody to get to the point where their ear is screaming at them before having to make these changes, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm still so passionate about helping people make the right choices in their lives because I don't want people to, like you said, I wouldn't wish upon anybody, you know, like, I remember I used to love meditation and yoga and I'm just like one of the first things I thought about when it happened to me was how am I going to meditate Mm. how am I just going to like uh do yoga or be in silence I love my quiet time like it was taken away from me it's just it it gets gets robbed from you doesn't it you know what you just said about um you know you don't want it to you don't want a person to get to a point where their ear is screaming you wouldn't believe I mean, it's crazy how many people contact me and they say on Instagram usually, and they say, Hey, like, I love your stuff. Um, You know, I'm not really implementing it yet because my tinnitus is just, I just got it the other day and it's just like a little bit loud. So I figure that I probably don't have to do anything. And I'm like, you should be the most interested about actually doing it because obviously like tinnitus doesn't come from nowhere. What an ENT will say is that tinnitus is idiopathic, which I'm sure, as you know, the word literally means it came from nowhere. Oh, you've got idiopathic subjective tinnitus, subjective meaning it's just you only you can hear it. Idiopathic subjective tinnitus. Holy shit. That is one of the dumbest things I've ever fucking heard. It doesn't come from nowhere. If there was no. tinnitus before, 
and there is tinnitus now, there is a cause. Usually yeah. multiple causes. It, it just doesn't for God just doesn't like throw, I don't know, tinnitus down at you. Maybe some people believe that. I don't know. But you know, I say to them, look, if you have tinnitus now, it's for a reason. And that reason is that you have been doing something for long enough for and i use i believe it's due to mitochondrial dysfunction and things like that for that problem to get so bad that you contracted tinnitus you can hear it now and the thing is you're still doing those things you haven't changed so obviously it's going to get worse how about yeah. you just stop it now and then your tinnitus will go away and you never have to come to me going you know liam I lost my job because I can't concentrate or I had to quit my band because I can't concentrate or I think I'm going to kill myself. What do I do? And it's like, I know ne I never say to them, well, you should have come to me earlier. I never say that because that doesn't help anyone, but I'm certainly thinking it. And I do tell people this in my, in a, you know, social media and interviews I do, which is that, you know, even if someone's lucky, I actually have people who follow me, who've never had tinnitus and don't even really know what it is because they just like the content so much. And the other, sorry. You go. You go. I was just going to say, I'll come back to that. I was just going to say, I have, um, when I help people with their tinnitus, they go to me, you know, Liam, not only did my tinnitus go away, but my skin issue is cleared up. Or yeah. I've had people say to me, you know, Liam, I don't even need to use my glasses anymore. The reason I use mine now is because I'm on the computer like all day working, but you know, when I'm not I really need them, but yes. and, and people say, or, and men come to me and say, you know, I don't need to take Viagra anymore. My, you know, erection function is completely gone back to when I was like a teenager and women say, you know, I don't get painful periods anymore. It's like much easier to deal with. And so they go and tell their friends about it and say, Oh, you should check out this guy. He fixed it. And I was fixing my tinnitus. And so I have, mm -hmm big influx of people who just like want to like lose weight or fix their skin problems or their teeth problems or whatever it is. Yes. And because you, you know, there is no real way to just target tinnitus. It's the whole body. It's the whole, it it's the holistic approach. Yeah. yeah. And when you get it, when you get a doctor who says, Oh, you have tinnitus, take these eardrops. It's like, that is ridiculous. That is not going to do shit. It's not, it's probably going to make you worse because yeah. most of these eardrops they give you are ototoxic, meaning they're toxic mm. to the ear. Mm. So, I mean, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's... You know, you know um, so we, we've talked a lot about our experiences with, um, with you know, working with others. I think, I think what's a really important point for us to discuss, um, to leave this on a real positive, because, like, yeah. yeah. I want people to realize that you're passionate and I'm passionate and we're not we're not highlighting where people go wrong because we don't want you to win out here. You know, we want people <laughs> to get rid of their ringing. Yeah. I want people <laughs> to be able to live the best life possible like like I am now having yeah. made certain choices and yeah. they were all hard for me and I had no idea how I was going to do them. I didn't even know if I could do them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, prevention is most important for all of us, whether it's weight gain, you know, managing you know, aging or anti-aging and, you know, um, longevity, ear ringing, vertigo, like there are other ways. And I think what you and I, and why we're so passionate about it and why it also is frustrating in a certain, in certain ways for us to see people not truly step into it because we've been on the other side and we know what it can do for you, how it can make you feel, how your body can function. Um, and I just, I just think we need to, um, just encourage people to take that first step and stick to it, to see it out. Because when you start to feel better, um, then nothing, you know, nothing feels as good as it does, you know, when you're feeling better than you were before, you know? Yeah. Well, um, I think you mentioned it before because we were talking about, you know, accountability and things like that. Mm. And um, nothing works as well as when they start getting results. Nothing. Because then yep. they start thinking, holy cow, it's actually possible. Yeah. And that, that matters for everything, whether it's uh, financial, weight loss, dating, um, you know, uh, lifting heavier weights, whatever you're getting a new job, promotion, whatever it might be, when you actually start to get results. 
um, you go, oh, this is amazing. I'm going to keep going. This is fantastic. But it's especially appropriate and especially effective when it comes to the world of tinnitus. And the reason for more so than most other things, and the reason for that is simply due to the fact that everybody thinks that it's permanent. Everybody yeah. thinks there's nothing you can do. You go to mm -hmm. an ENT, a neurotologist, an otologist, a psychiatrist, psychologist, endocrinologist, everyone, this, that, the other thing. You go to different countries, you go to an expert, you go to all you try ear candling, you try nasal mm -hmm. spray stuff, you try sinus yeah. surgery, you try all these things. Yeah. Like, I did a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing too. And it's just yeah. like, you no, know, it's that whole thing, like ladder up the wrong wall, right? And so when people actually give the stuff a go where it's like, all right, well, let's just, you know, use some, we don't have to, like, you don't have to use like some hyper crazy modern technology to fix tinnitus. Like, you know, some people go like, oh, I tried, I tried the best thing in the world, Liam. I paid $10,000, $20,000 for stem cells right into my ear and it didn't do anything. I'm like, yeah, well, uh, you know, I could have told you that for free. That stuff doesn't do anything. Stem cells is not a problem. You know, in most yeah. people's cases, it doesn't, there's nothing wrong with getting more of them. That's fine. Um, and, you know, if you want to do it, do it, uh, but do it as well as fixing the whole body. But, um, yeah, so um, if, I guess are we are we ending it now on, like, final notes? or but to, but to Yeah, I, I, I think I think most importantly, I always want people to understand that, you know, that they can make these changes and... Um, there is always a support that that you need through people like Liam or myself, and that um, they just need to believe in themselves and trust the process and be patient. Um, and you know, it's actually not um, it's not going to be easy, but you know, choose your pain, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, in terms of um, be patient and trust yourself, you know, fixing a problem. Um, people need to understand when you have a chronic illness, whether it's, you know, gastritis, tinnitus, uh, arthritis, um, chronic pain, migraine headaches, um, fertility issues, or something like that. You can't fix it in like a week or a month or even a couple of months, depending on what it is. It's going to take like six months to a year or more yeah. for most people mm -hmm. because, and I say this, and I hope this motivates people because, and I think it will because, if you give people the, the wrong expectation and you say, oh, you know, just try it for like a month and then see what happens. Most people who follow my advice for a month get no results because it takes much longer than that. Yeah. And, I, and people say to me, well, you know, Liam, I've only had tinnitus for two weeks. So therefore it should only take a couple of weeks to get rid of, right? And I say, wrong, it's probably going to take six months or more. And the reason is because you've only had this symptom of tinnitus for two weeks, your health yeah. problems, your health problems have been bubbling below the surface for probably, for a long time. yeah, for a decade or more. Absolutely. Like, like I'll give you like, just to really tie a bow on that statement. I have had uh, 70 year olds that, that it took four months to get rid of tinnitus and 17 year olds that it took a year just because yeah. of the health choices they were making for the period yeah. leading up to it. Like every everybody, went, when they come and consult with me, they want to tell me about the day they got tinnitus. And that's interesting. I, I, I need to know that. But I want to know about the 10 years before because that's yeah. what the answers are. It's not just yeah. like, you know, oh, I took an ototoxic medication and my ears started ringing. I'm like, okay, great. I made a note of that. Now go back in time for 10 years and tell me about everything. And that's why the yeah. calls take so long is because yeah. – it's, you know, it's more important to know about, you know, your whole life, not just one thing, which is why when someone goes into an office and says, oh, I have this rash on my arm or I'm getting headaches and they go take this pill. It's like the reason they have these yeah. symptoms is not because of a deficiency of this pill. It's because of, you know, their mattress or mold or a food allergy or stress. It could be shingles. Who knows? But yeah, anyway, yeah. so just people Absolutely. people need to know you you can get better you can you just can yeah yes yeah so i think it's more so about them making a choice to change mm -hmm. and then staying committed to those choices because in every moment you've got a choice so it's just make the right choices and 
seek the right information. You know, look at who's uh, done what you want and have had good results like you mm-hmm. um, and uh, go and find the people who can help you. Yeah, uh, that's just, and uh, I want to talk about that for a second too because that's so important, is that in, in the space of tinnitus, again, this is a really important point, someone yeah. who studies to be a doctor, you know, they do science and they do medicine and then if they want to be a specialist, they're doing their specialist and then they do their placement. The, they learn so many different, because an ENT is ear, nose, and throat. That's an otolaryngologist. You know, they do grommets, they do tonsillitis, all these different things. It's very extensive. And the time period that they spend on tinnitus is it amounts to, from what I've been able to ascertain, it amounts to about 15 days of re- of work about tinnitus. Now, would you rather go to that person or would you rather go to someone else, meaning myself or someone else you can choose, who had the problem, researched it for years, has gotten rid of it, but not only that, helped other people to get rid of it too. And so people exactly. just have, people have such a hard on for medical qualifications. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, if I have a broken leg or I'm, let's say, overdosing on something, or I've been bitten by a snake, or you know, someone attacked me and I'm I'm bleeding profusely. Call a doctor because you know, yes. and someone who's like a holistic specialist or whatever, it's not probably not going to be able to help you. They can probably perform CPR and that's it. Yeah. You need the tools, the training, the medicine, and everything. But so that that's amazing. They save lives. ER doctors, they are heroes of society. I love them. I love them. But when it comes to you know chronic issues. I'm not going to tell people what to do in, in the, you know, in terms of like medical advice, but I personally wouldn't even bother. I would just go look somewhere else. I'd say, okay, who has this problem and has solved it? This person. Hey, mm-hmm. what did you do? Right. That sort of thing. Because this- we live in this, we live in this information technology age where we're able to connect with people, and we can, you know, like the most important thing for me now is to see other people's reviews of someone else's experience and yep. to know, like with you, that you've actually gotten rid of it. People, yeah. when they come to me, they see my photos. They can see that I've had my own experience and journey of losing 23 kilos and 10% of my body fat and completely changing who yeah. I am and how I look and how I feel. Like for some people, most people, that's enough to, for them to say, I trust you. Tell me what you did so I can try it too. And yeah, your photos are fantastic. And, uh, you know, because I'm going to put this interview on my channel too, if it's okay with you. And I'll, yeah, put, yeah, a, absolutely. I'll, I'll put a link to your page down below. And another yeah, thing, absolutely. another thing with the way that people, you know, if you, if the thing about, you know, the way that we look in fitness is that it's like all encompassing, you know, because it shows that you know what to do and you have the discipline to do it. So yeah. I can't tell you the amount of times I've gone into a doctor's office and they are obese. They are literally so fat. And that I have my detractors on the internet too. There's not many of them now because a lot of them have come to me for help when they realize that I know what I'm talking about. But still my detractors, they usually hide behind like a fake screen name. And it's like, all right, you want to just play a game. It's fine. I don't care. You do your thing. I don't want to talk to you. But eventually when they show their faces, these people are obese. They're so fat. It's like, do you want to have a person who looks like this and is just like muscular and fit? Or do you want to have a person who is just like, you can tell they sit at home and eat like a whole block of chocolate a day, which not only is sad, but it shows that maybe this isn't the person that, you know, you should be listening to for health. Yeah, I think I think now's the time for people to really become aware of where they're getting their information from yeah. and who they're trusting with their choices. And number one, that should be themselves, <laughs> yeah. um, which is what I did and what you've done, you know, on your journey to lower your, to get rid of your ear ringing. Look, mine, mine is very, very low. Um, it, it still does flare up here and there. And I, I don't know that I'm in a position to say it's completely gone, but for most of my time, I don't hear it, thankfully. Send me a send me a message. I'll sort you out. It could, okay, it could be like a, a mold or a parasite problem or something like that, but just send me a message and I'll, I'll sort you out in private. 
problem. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for being my first guest on the Melissa B podcast show. I yeah. really enjoyed this because, you know, you and I are very like-minded and we've had similar experiences. So it's been an absolute pleasure to get to know you and, and hear your story and share our experiences. And, um, yeah, it sounds like we're both on similar paths now too. So if anybody wants to come and check out your your work and what you're doing to help people, uh, what's your uh, socials and your website? Yes, so uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Liam Stops Tinnitus, um, and you can go to my website. I'll give you a link for that so you can put it uh, below mm -hmm. the video. And yes. probably the best place to go is my Instagram, excuse me, which is called Liam Stops Tinnitus as well. You can check those out. Yeah. And by the way, for those listening from wherever you're listening from, Liam says tinnitus. I say tinnitus, and that's just the way, yeah. just the way yeah. I learned it. It's it's a dialect thing. It's like it's like we say water, and Americans say water. You know, it's like yeah. a dialect thing. Hey, hold on, you're from Melbourne, aren't you? Yeah, I'm from Melbourne. I'm, there's a, there's a Melbourne Adelaide difference too in su certain letters and words. Oh yeah, so we'll, we'll just put it down to that. There's, there's definitely an accent difference <laughs> for sure <laughs> okay there cool is. well, well uh, thanks for having me on i really appreciated it and i really appreciated being number one the guest the first guest so thank you very yes. much thank you appreciate it